Hello, let's talk about Social Security and savings using a two-time period model. In this model, we're going to have your consumption before retirement on the horizontal axis, your retirement consumption after or on the vertical axis, so you have your life before retirement and your life after retirement. Let's assume we have inco some income before retirement and after retirement. Let me get a dot right here. So we're going to assume most of your income comes before retirement. So we're going to put a dot down here. Let's assume you get $50,000 before retirement. Uh, might help to add another zero. And you earn your endowment. It's called an endowment. So you're given so $50,000 before retirement. And you're given $10,000 after. 10000 Make sure we get enough zeros. There we go. Let's call this point A. Yeah, that looks like a better A. Now, let's also look at what these points along the axis. I'm going to, uh, or what values right there and what values up here. I'm going to assume a 10% interest rate. I can borrow or I can lend at 10%. Obviously, a simplifying assumption. So if I can borrow, so this point here is if I borrow all $10,000 over here, well, 10% 10, 10 of 10,000 is what, 1,000? Uh, and so, or actually what we would have here is your 10,000. Take the present value, 1 plus 0 0.1. And if you take 1, point, 1 plus 0 0.1, I believe you get 9,000. $90 and about 91 cents approximately. So now I have the 50,000 plus the discounted 10,000 because, you know, I'm borrowing from it. So I need to, you know, they're not going to give me the full 10,000. I only get 9,000. That way I can pay back in the future um, with 10% interest. So I have down here 59,000. $90.91 up here. If I don't spend anything in my uh, before retirement, I can s save all 50000 10% of 50000 in this case. And so in this case, it's a future value problem. So 10%, about what? Um, I can get the uh, um, original 50,000 plus the 10,000 plus 10%, 10 which is what, 5,000? So I get uh, about $65,000. So which is this point, the 65,000 is I get all 10,000 plus I get the 50,000. Or actually I could just say I get one plus Point 0.1, which is the interest rate we talked about in decimal terms, 50,000. Well, that doesn't want to stay there, does it? And that should be equal to $65,000. So that's where we get the two axes. Now, I assume that I want to save something. So I'm going to assume I want to not borrow, so I take money from my retirement and consume it earlier. I'm assuming this person is a saver. And this person wants to be right here. And which means they have less, oops, let's redraw that. Which means this person gets more money before retirement, or I'm sorry, saves money retor before retirement in order to be able to spend more after retirement. So we get 10000 after retirement. Let's assume for simplicity this this person chooses to uh, uh, save 8000 And so this person has, what, 42000 So this person, 50000 minus 8000 is 42000 Well, if this person saves the 8000 at 10% interest, we get um, eight th 10,000. So we get the 10,000 we had before 
plus 1 plus 0 0.1 times the 8,000 that this person just saved. Well, that should be pretty close to what? 18,000, if I did it correctly, $800. So we have an $18,800 up here. So the person saved 8,000 gives us 8,000 plus $800 interest income. Okay, and this is an indifference curve. So this is where the per person gets the highest level of satisfaction is what we're assuming. And let's assume we call that indifference curve U, um, let's call it U0. Okay, this is before Social Security. Now let's assume there's a Social Security program implemented. And let's assume that that Social Security program, how should we have it? Shall we assume there's a, uh, let's say, a $5,000 Social Security tax? So I'm going to put this in red just to differentiate. Start out here at point A, $5,000 Social Security tax. Let's assume my, my retirement savings, the 10000 is not tax. It's just less money right here. So in this case, we have what? We have a point five thousand. What is this? Four thousand or forty-five thousand dollars, rather. Five thousand from fifty thousand, forty-five thousand. Okay, so now that we have forty-five thousand dollars, let's assume the government's going to give that exact amount back. So there's, I'm going to assume for simplicity, there is no administrative cost. The government just takes the 5,000 and then gives it back to me with 10% interest. Pretty strong assumption. So in this case, first case though, we're going to, I can see if I can draw a fairly straight line parallel to the, so the slope of this budget line here is, uh, you know, one or is basically one over the interest rate, and so it's going to be parallel. So I'm going to assume does that look parallel? Now I'm going to also assume I can borrow from my future Social Security. If I can't borrow from the future Social Security, it stops right here, goes over, and straight down. But I'm going to assume I can borrow, so it's just parallel all the way down. But now they're going to give it back to me. So basically. Um, so notice I get the 5,000, and um, so let's assume if they're going to give it back to me, I'm right back to the old old curve up here. So the government takes $5,000 away from me, and then it gives me 5,000 plus $500 interest, 10% of 500 back to me, which gets me, you know, I can get back up here. So for example, let's assume that I choose to be, so I can get right back up on this point, right, let's call this point B. So point B, basically instead of saving, privately saving the $8,000 that we did before, the 50000 minus the 42000 now I take $5,000 goes to the government, and I'm going to assume uh, $3,000 now goes to private savings. Well, I still have $8,000, part of it from the government, 5000 from the government. So let's write that up here. $5,000 from Social Security. And then we're also going to assume I get, that's what's 5 plus $3,000 savings, private savings. And that gives me my $8,000 before. I'm going to assume I still get the same 10% that we did before. Well, so $8,000 from both programs still puts me exactly right here. So from this, this diagram, it looks like that Social Security should put me at the same indifference curve. And given my big assumption that Social Security gives me the same rate of return, which is not true, but I'm right here and I have the same living standard, there's a big difference here. And that's the fact that the savings, that's my savings. Social Security, the $5,000, where I'm assuming now I only have to save $3,000 from my private case, 
five thousand dollars taken back away from me in tax and then they promised to give me five thousand five hundred well that's going to put me back out here five, that is ten percent of five thousand is five hundred dollars notice what's happening though social security is a pay-as-you-go system so overall private overall savings that goes to investment goes down by five thousand dollars and so in this case there's less savings in society so notice private savings has gone down so this is one of the things that we expect to happen with social security and savings is because it's a pay-as-you-go system current recip or current taxpayers money goes to current retirees. Thank you.